To say that things aren't going well for Chef Mario Batali's career would be an understatement. Abysmal is a better description, and things just keep getting worse. These are the real reasons Batali is giving up all his restaurants. In December 2017, allegations of Batali's misconduct against his staff surfaced. The damaging report came courtesy of the New York food website Eater, as four women claim that over the course of two decades, Batali made unwanted comments and engaged in inappropriate touching. A 60 Minutes piece on the allegations soon followed, and by that point, the Special Victims Division of the New York Police Department had stepped in to investigate. Only one of the two cases that the NYPD was looking into was still within the statute of limitations. The detectives eventually closed the case without filing any charges, and Batali maintained denial of any assault, though he apologized for deeply inappropriate behavior. Criminal charges or not, the damage had been done, and by May 2018, the Batali and Bastianich Hospitality Group was working to cut ties with the chef. As Batali became a bad apple in the eyes of many, the Batali and Bastianich Hospitality Group started to pick up that same reputation. According to Batali's business partner Joe Bastianich, the harm from the news reports was almost immediate. He told New York Magazine, on the day in December that it broke, I had to walk into these restaurants and talk about these allegations. Bastianich added that some employees were crying over the news, while others felt betrayed. He also noted that the allegations against his former partner were horrific, and that he felt terrible after learning of them. Chef Nancy Silverton, who founded four restaurants in California with Batali, said that while she considered him a friend, her decision to separate was immediate. The Batali scandal also had a significant effect on the business level of his restaurants. There's so much business in having one restaurant, not to mention as many as you have. You mean 26? Is that right? Yeah. His newest New York eatery, La Serena, had its share of problems before the disturbing news broke, but it slowed down even more once the NYPD investigation became known. Several months before La Serena closed its doors, Sands Casino ejected five B&B group restaurants, three in Las Vegas and two in Singapore, off its properties. One of Batali's oldest NYC restaurants, Babo, has managed to remain popular following the scandal, but most others have struggled. Lupa, which has been open in New York since 1999, has seen business slow even during busy times like New York's Restaurant Week. A month before the report that brought Batali's misconduct allegations to the surface, the chef was already in hot water for staff treatment. He and Babo were hit with a second lawsuit for pay violations regarding the restaurant staff. He had previously settled the $5.25 million lawsuit in 2012 that had been brought against the restaurant by staff for skimming tips and other wage violations. He paid a $1.5 million settlement that same year for the same claims by workers at his restaurant Del Pasto. A busser who worked at Babo from early 2016 to October 2017 brought numerous allegations against Batali. He claimed that he was shorted his overtime pay as well as his full minimum wage earnings. He also claimed that he spent at least 20% of his time doing non-tipped work that should have warranted an $11 per hour minimum wage instead of his $7.50 wage. In 2018, Batali's restaurant cohort settled for $2.2 million in the suit that also included staff at the restaurant Felidia. After allegations of Batali's bad behavior came to light, the New York Post ran a scathing piece that claimed the chef had checked out of involvement in his restaurants even before the Eater report was published. A B&B spokesperson confirmed Batali's lack of involvement, noting that it had been a while since he'd taken an active role in management or any day-to-day -day operations at his restaurants. Credit for any creative wins in Batali's restaurants that generated buzz might have gone to the celebrity chef. But the Post piece suggested others were often behind the culinary creations. Many of the newer dishes at Del Pasto, for example, were invented by Lydia Bastianich or by the current or former executive chefs. It shouldn't come as a big surprise, but many of the staff at Batali's restaurants weren't exactly thrilled to be working for the guy after the scandal broke. If the wage theft lawsuits weren't enough to send them packing, the misconduct allegations may have been the final straw. Before Batali's bad behavior came to light, securing a job in one of his restaurants wasn't easy, and it was often necessary to have an inside connection. But the scandal resulted in staffers leaving, and the restaurants struggling to find qualified people to fill the openings. It's hard to blame the job hunters for not being interested. No amount of money is worth the work environment these restaurants were rumored to encourage. It's possible that these establishments hope that ditching Vitaly will bring more qualified staffers. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more MASH videos about your favorite topics are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.